What's up Nerf Herders, this is Alan from OC Nerf, and today we're going to be taking a closer look at the 3D printed parts I showed in my last video from Orange Modworks. In this video we're also going to be covering the differences between FDM printing and SLA printing, which I didn't know about until I started doing the research on the parts that I received talking both with Orange Modworks, uh, June was very helpful in getting me that information, but also doing my own homework, doing my own research on the differences between those at least those two types of printing there's others but just those two in particular fdm printing is what i'm most familiar with and probably what most of you are familiar with is not the same as sla printing which is what's been done with these parts so let's kind of talk about that first fdm printing also known as fused deposition modeling is using the thermoplastic filament which is what you're used to to melt that and layer it to create your 3D model. Think of it as a hot glue gun, if you've ever played with hot glue, which I'm hoping you have. Think of it as a hot glue gun, where you would put down a layer of hot glue, let it cool, put down another layer of hot glue, let it cool, and so on and so forth to create your structure. That's what an FDM printer is. That's what you're most familiar with, I'm sure. That's what I'm familiar with, and that's what I have personally. SLA printing, in contrast, is what's known as stereolithography apparatus printing, where instead of filament being melted and layered, it is using a resin and flashing UV light at the resin at certain spots to harden the resin, and in fact, creating the model that way. It's actually even flipped inverted in compared to FDM. FDM printing, as we take a look at what that is, is layers upon layers as I mentioned and it's extruding hot filament from the top putting it on a bed and creating your structure if we take a look at what SLA printing actually is SLA printing has a bed of resin and underneath that are a handful of gizmos and gadgets that basically point a UV light through through lasers at specific points in the resin to harden those parts of the resin and thus create the structure. And in fact, the bed is at the top and it pulls the creation out from the resin as each layer is being created. Now, I'm no expert in SLA printing. I know I'm familiar with FDM printing. So bear in mind, I'm kind of giving you as much information as I can. I do encourage you to do your own research on this as well. Take a look at some videos, read up about it online. It's a really interesting and nerdy topic. Some of the benefits of SLA printing over FDM printing is in the details. SLA printing, because of the way it works, is just much more refined in its process so that it can actually create products that look almost flawless and without obvious layers, it almost looks molded. It doesn't have that same scratchy feel as a typical 3D printed model. If you run your fingernail through it, it doesn't sound the same. For example, if I did that here, it doesn't quite sound the same. There's a little bit of that vibration sound. There's a little bit of that friction sound, but it doesn't feel and it doesn't come across in the same way as a 3D printed model using FDM. I have for example there, this 3D printed part, and you can hear this. Even printed at very fine layers, you can kind of hear that. Additionally, you can also hear it here on this 3D printed part. That rubbing sound coming from all the, the layers. So there's one aspect of it. It's, it's more fine tuned. It can get the details right. It's really good for a lot of um, miniature modeling actually from what I've seen in photos and videos comparing the two FDM versus SLA. So what that does also is improves accuracy in your builds, which is gonna be really important in what's being done here with these parts. So we're improving that accuracy. The best way I can describe the benefits of SLA printing for what we have here is the accuracy it has, but also it's as close as you can get to almost injection molding through 3D printing. So if we take a look closer at these parts, I have to get it at the right angle for you to kind of start to see where the lines are. There we go. Whereas in comparison to uh, some of these 3D printed parts using the FDM, you can pretty much see it pretty 
easily there. There you go. You can really see it when it hits that light. Suffice to say that the process is very different. The reason I wanted to get into that is both to kind of educate you guys as I learned about the differences between the two kind of printing styles and also answer a very uh, a couple of questions that I've heard a lot um, in the comments, both on the video and on social media, since I uh, showcase these parts. One of them is um, this just kind of the reasoning behind the uh, the way this was printed. So if you can tell the printing was kind of connected like this, I think, there we go. I wish I had ripped this off on camera, but I didn't think about it. I was trying to clean up the products after I had filmed it um, and then thought about it after that I should have probably filmed taking off these parts. That being said, I did keep this one piece here to kind of showcase this to you. But this was how it was. And what I was thinking is that it was being printed, let me move all these other parts, with the bottom here, and it was being printed like a filament printer going all the way to the top. My original thought, the reasoning behind the angles, and if you recall, these other ones were also printed at angles, that the reasoning behind these angles was to help strengthen the parts. In my experience with 3D printing, if you have a possibility of having a break point here and you're printing, you know, this way, and you're printing and you're printing your layers and it's going up this way, there is a possibility for slight differences between the layers that would create weak points and snap it. However, if you knew that the force was going in this direction and you printed it this way instead of this way, right, and you were printing the layers this way, it actually strengthened the part significantly. I think somewhere on Facebook I did a video with a bar, a uh, 3D printed rod, and I had printed it in this regard and it was just easy to snap. And then when I printed it in this fashion, it was hard to snap. In fact, I had to put my whole weight on it and it still didn't even snap or barely even bend. And it was the exact same bar just printed at a different orientation. So the orientation of the printing matters in FDM printing. Here, it's a little bit different, a little bit different of a reason. So speaking with June from Orange Mod Works, he had mentioned that the really important focus he had was the accuracy of this part right here, which is supposed to create a perfect seal with 17 30 seconds brass. So the highest level of accuracy has to be made at this point of the part. That being said, he worked and tweaked the angles of how to print this in such a way that this was the most accurate. And I don't have an SLA printer to print, nor do I have the experience of printing with SLA. So I'm gonna take this on good faith that through his testing, he realized this was the most accurate way, this was the best way to print this part of the build most accurately. Now I flipped this upside down because that's really what it is in SLA printing. You want things kind of pull, uh, you don't want things flat because as I've had it described to me and I've, as I've kind of taken a look at it, you want as few points to be the focus of each layer as possible. So if we were to completely make this flat, this whole thing would be one layer instead of just this slice being one layer, this slice being one layer. So less resin is being hardened at each layer, which is what you really want when it becomes SL, uh, when you're talking about SLA printing, printing accurately and whatnot. I hope I'm explaining that correctly. And it, on it goes with all the rest of these parts. So even this, so I understand the reason why this was printed at an angle to focus on this, but I didn't quite understand why these parts were printed at an angle and that was one of the comments, but it's the same principle. So that's why all of the parts, as you saw in the previous video, were printed at an angle. I uh, hope that answers some of those questions about that. The other comment that I got was that Orange Modworks is sending these parts with their supports on. Now, that shouldn't be a surprise. It's pretty much described that way. It's on their video to say that they will be shipping them with part supports. That does kind of help with the cost of them not having to do all of the cleanup, but the cleanup, to be quite honest with you, was really simple. You could pretty much just use your fingers to peel this off 
Um, and let's talk about this material. This is very flexible material in, re in, in comparison to the supports that you would normally see on 3D printed film. This is a really interesting way of doing supports. Um, but let me just show you how easy kind of this stuff um, breaks off. It's pretty darn easy. It doesn't take much to tear them off and it doesn't leave a whole lot behind. So I didn't clean this up after I tore this off. So we're gonna take a look. You can see some of the bumps there. Um, and in some places there aren't even any bumps. So this was the other part that was connected on here and it came out pretty clean. So in some areas it's cleaner than others and you probably won't have to work it. And in some you might have to do a little bit of uh, light sanding in order to get it to be um, cleaner. So here's another one that's pretty easy to see the little bits of uh, filament debris, well, not filament, sorry, uh, kind of resin debris on there. Um, but for the most part, it came out pretty cleanly. And as I said, it's really easy to take off these supports. They weren't actually a big problem. The other thing that you'll notice as well with FDM printing is when you do take off the supports, it does kind of leave a few other things a lot more things behind that you don't necessarily want. One is some of this rough parts here. Usually it's at the bottom and you don't care about it as much, but uh, it leaves a lot more stuff to clean up. And also there's this kind of stringing effect that tends to happen with filament printing as the extruder goes from one side to the other. There might be slight stringing effects. You can tweak your printer to reduce those, um, reduce that but it does still happen to a slight degree. You can slow things down, you can change the speed, you can change the extrusion, you can change the point of which the extruder pulls back some of the material as it's moving. There's a lot of tweaking that you can do in the settings. I've done as much as I can, not necessarily with this print, but with other prints to reduce the effects of stringing. But stringing is one of the other more common problems with FDM printing. Not a problem with this because there is no extruder moving back and forth, it's a laser hitting a bed of resin that hardens that part of the resin uh, and it's being pulled up so you have a very clean interior, which is a, a rather nice thing. As you may be researching into SLA printing, what you may come across is the post printing tasks that you have to do. One of them is uh, recommending that you bathe your parts in an isopropyl bath uh, to kind of clean up and smoothen out the parts and then it's actually not fully cured, fully hardened when it's out of the printer. After that bath, you then bathe it in more UV light, either by sticking it outside in the sunlight or getting a UV bed to kind of put this in. It looks like a um, mini sun tanner for these parts. And you just place it in there for a specific amount of time so that the parts can fully harden and cure. You don't have to do that with the parts that were sent over by Orange Mod Works. I went ahead and talked to them about that as well. They said those are things that they've already done prior to sending these parts out. You can, if you would like to, to maybe clean it up a little bit, but they do feel pretty solid, pretty stiff. They've got kind of a tacky texture in some places, and that is somewhat common when it comes to the SLA printing, um, but it's not like sticky or anything. It just feels very grippy. I guess grippy is a little bit better than the smooth feeling of this print kind of really grips. You can hear that versus this, whoops, versus this. So th that's one of the things that you'll notice when you hold these parts, but you don't have to do any other cleaning work other than removing the uh, supports and doing some light cleanup in some of the areas where the supports were touching. The other thing that they mentioned in their video as well is the orientation that they have really reduces the need to have supports in areas that shouldn't have any kind of um, uh, bumps or anything like that, like the O-ring grooves and the pusher piece and wherever else have you. So that's really important stuff to note as well. The interior here came out pretty cleanly as well on my part. So that's a lot of technical stuff regarding 3D printing. I think that's as much as I can handle talking about in one video for the moment. Um, but let's kind of talk about these parts.